Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Watain called Trident Wolf Eclipse. So when I've talked about black metal, I haven't really talked all that much about record labels behind black metal. And that's mostly because it's a frequently controversial subgenre that has remained almost entirely underground. Most major labels and distributors, they don't touch it. And that suits a lot of groups just fine. Now on the one hand, that can make finding certain black metal albums a real pain in the ass, especially on vinyl, because distribution can be limited or scarce. But on the flip side, if you hear that a black metal group has signed to a major label or distributor, more often than not, you could give odds that the group is going to have diluted or diversified their sound. Now granted, when it came to the Swedish black metal act Watain in 2013, some of you could have predicted that already. While some of the earlier records did showcase an impressive amount of shredding in a theatrical brand of theistic Satanism, which of course led to the sort of elaborate live shows that were intensely controversial, and we're not going to get into that right now, I personally never found them all that challenging or all that abrasive. The production was always pretty clean the vocals were never that guttural and the song structures felt a fair bit more accessible and in the latter case that was mostly a good thing and by the time they signed on with Century and put out The Wild Hunt in 2013 openly dabbling in tones that were more progressive or doom inspired with even clean vocals they were primed for that crossover and they had the sales to prove it even if the atmosphere the intensity and the writing had taken a bit of a dip along the way and then close friend of the band and occult rock artist Silim Lamushi committed suicide it was a moment that shook the band very deeply and drove them back into expanding upon the desperate, dark empowerment themes that characterized their full-length debut record in 2000. A truly nasty little album that might have textures that'll satisfy some black metal purists, but really doesn't showcase the refined compositional strengths that would start to come on later, like on Cassis Luciferi. So, if they were going back to that tone and style as seasoned veterans, this could make for a pretty damn potent listen, right? Bring a lot of that texture back. Okay? Well, here's the thing. This is exactly what I was hoping that Watain would do with a project like this. But I recognize by saying that I'm placing myself opposite the folks who might be kind of disappointed by the lack of that more progressive side that came with their last two more well-known breakout releases. Or hell, maybe I'm just showing some of my inexperience with this side of the genre. Because well, I can see some of this being branded as more direct, explosive, but even more simplistic black metal that doesn't differentiate itself enough from its peers or forebearers. You know what, the more I went through Trident Wolf Eclipse, the more I was convinced there was more going on than what's gotten credit. There is a method to this madness. It has led to a furious black metal album that might not be among my favorites in the subgenre, but still sounds pretty damn good regardless. I actually kind of dig this. Now, granted, with all that in mind, there are some qualifiers to any recommendation, and the biggest comes in the lyrics, and you know what, for as much as they even matter in this scene, this has never been Watain's strong suit, let's be honest. Now, I don't mind the theistic Satanism at all in theory. It's your standard apocalypse prophet stuff purified by unholy fire and savagery to face the reincarnated antichrist as demons and unholy madness charge up from the depths and the abyss to retake heaven. But the fact that I can follow all this up with, you know, the standard stuff, it does speak to Watain not really taking in a fresh or potent or challenging or emotionally dynamic direction. And while the production does add a real sense of urgency to all of it that I appreciate, neither the poetry or the dramatic arc of the record is all that captivating. It feels a little bit austere, or for lack of better words, kind of puritanical. And if there is an element that suffers more in the back to basics approach, it is a lot of the songwriting. You would think they would at least add a little more of that personal touch given the inspiration for this dramatic back to basic shift and yet that doesn't really come through. But okay, fine. Lyrics are seldom the most relevant thing in this brand of black metal anyway. It's more about the composition. It's more about that production. And again, as I have said before, I haven't really been a fan of Watain's increasingly clean and polished production or their genre experimentation. It was never able to cultivate a lot of atmosphere for me. And whenever they did dabble in progressive metal or doom metal, it felt, well, a little bit awkward, especially considering their greatest strengths came more in melodic composition and intensity, and that can work just fine in black metal. So thank God that Trident Wolf Eclipse opted for far rougher, more explosive, 
dirty tones, cranking up the blast beats and tremolo shredding even faster, with tones that not only embrace that rougher down tuning, but also showcase a little bit more depth in the mix. Not so much that this album becomes symphonic or more atmospheric, but enough that it can leverage some of the existing atmosphere for melodic complexity or pummeling moments of musical punctuation. A big part of this comes in how well the drums are mic'd, especially that kick drum, which can lead to some truly thunderous moments on songs like Sacred Damnation or Throne Below, which really do pay off the more developed tremolo melodies that will then leverage a lot of those acoustic accents pretty well. There is some dynamics there, and the melodies are really truly satisfying with those deeper kick drums. And I can't stress how well that deep, roiling surge plays on songs like Two Full Strike or The Fire of Power, playing to a slightly slower tempo, sure, letting the whiplash transitions have a little bit more room to breathe. And really, for the Watain songs that connect with me off this album, it's balancing out those transitional pieces with the raw intensity that they definitely bring to the table. The opener, Nuclear Alchemy, brings some stunning firepower, and I really dug the shrill screams of guitar keening across a lot of the song, but at the same time, some of the transitions between melodic segments can feel a little bit slapdash, which is also the case for Fur Diabolicus, or Ultra Pandemonia. Great nasty guitar leads, or in the latter case, an absolutely twisted little solo, but the piece of melody don't really transition all that well, or emerge out from behind a lot of the drums all that effectively. But on the flip side, you can't get the opposite, and I'll say it. The inclusion of Antichrist Miracle to end the album was not the best choice, with a slower, flattened guitar lead, and an odd refusal to let any of the vocals seem all that audible, making it a really wonky closer. I mean, I get why it's here to satisfy those fans looking for more of those progressive or doom metal touches, but it runs long, it doesn't really pay off all that well, and it doesn't fit in with the rest of the record. It just was an underwhelming closer. If you can skip it, I would. So as a whole... You know what? I was all set to really praise this record for a pivot towards tones I really like with a ton of intensity and sharper melodic composition. And you know what? Going through Watain's discography, I can see myself returning to this album a lot more than their last decade's worth of records. But I also can't ignore that in going to the back-to-basic songwriting approach, the writing was not entirely impressive in the lyrics, and the melodic cohesion definitely suffered. A lot of killer segments and pieces with great shredding and real complexity, but they can feel kind Kind of haphazardly stick together and the melodies aren't quite as prominent as they should be. Furthermore, I don't get the impression that Watain is going to stick with this sound. The fact that Century let them release this at all gives me the impression they were letting them just get this out of their system before heading closer to a more accessible direction. Which is a damn shame because this production easily has the most body and texture they've had in years. It definitely works for me. So you know what? I enjoyed this enough to give it a 7 out of 10, but I'm a little bit hesitant to recommend it, especially if you're more of a recent Watain fan, or you're not into this thicker, more suffocating and frenetic brand of black metal that might not satisfy if you're not digging into the details, or if you might find it playing a little too close to the forebear sound. Granted, if you like that sound and that transition and tradition, you'll dig the hell out of this, but beyond that, you know what, it's short enough, it's still worth a listen, check it out pretty kick-ass. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I know, another black metal review. I'm hoping to cover a little bit more this year. I'm hoping more of it winds up on my schedule, because this wasn't bad at all. I actually kind of enjoyed some of the little intricacies of this record, and it really has some thunderous moments. But if you want to buy the record, link's in the description below, and I got the poll up there for all you diehard Watain fans or diehard black metal fans to argue it out. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process or support this channel so I cover more black metal, link to my Patreon is right over there. Where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top ten list to this schedule. And there's one of those coming up right now. But if you want to take a look at that schedule, link to my Instagram is in the description below. Beyond that, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.